Hello, teachers, learners, and parents. Sir Jeff po at your service. Alam nyo ba na meron tayong website na tinatawag na DepEd Commons? Ang DepEd Commons ay binuo upang gawing accessible ang pagtuturo at pag-aaral dito sa ating bansa gamit lamang ang inyong mga smart devices gaya ng cellphones, tablets, at computers. Dito ay maaaring nating ma-access ang iba't ibang learning materials mula sa Department of Education. Meron itong mga interactive materials, electronic self-learning modules, at instructional video lessons mula sa DepEd TV na tiyak na makatutulong sa pag-aaral ng mga mag-aaral galing ka man sa public o private school. Walang problema dahil welcome ang lahat dito para ito sa mga guro, magulang at mga mag-aaral mula sa kinder hanggang grade 12, alternative learning system o ALS at pati na rin ang special education. At huwag kang mag-alala dahil kahit walang load ay maaari mong ma-access ang mga learning materials. Tama! Libre ito! Ang kailangan mo lamang gawin ay i-on ang iyong data at buksan lamang ang iyong browser at i-type ang commons.deped.gov.ph Alam na ba ng iyong mga kasamahang guro o mag-aral ang tungkol sa DepEd Commons? I-share mo na ang video na ito upang matuto rin sila kung paano gagamitin ang DepEd Commons sa mabilis at napakadaling paraan. Muli! Ito po si Sir Jeff at kita-kits po tayo sa DepEd Commons. Paalam! Magandang araw, Sir Wilbur po at your service. Narito ang itulay upang gabayan ka sa inyong pag-aaral upang lubos na maunawaan ang iba't ibang paksa o subject. Ang itulay ay isang free online tutorial class na pinangungunahan ng ICTS Educational Technology Unit sa pumumuno ni Undersecretary Alain Del B. Pasqua. Ang programang ito ay hindi lamang para sa mga bata, kundi ito rin ay magsisilbing gabay sa mga magulang at mga guro kung paano nila ituturo o gagabayan sa bawat asignatura ang kanilang mga anak o mga estudyante. Sa kasalukuyan, ang self-learning module mula sa regyon ng Calabarzon at kilala sa tawag na pivot ang ginagamit sa ating itulay online class. Kaya ano pang hinihintay ninyo? Ihanda na ang inyong mga ballpen o lapis, papel o kwaderno at samahan kaming itulay ang pagkatuto para sa bawat batang Pilipino. Sama-sama tayong magtutulungan para malampasan ang mga hamon sa panahong ito. Halina't matuto kasama ang inyong online tutor sa oras na ito. So yeah, good afternoon sa inyo lahat, especially sa mga nakatune in ngayon, mga senior high school learners natin. Or kung hindi man kayo mga senior high school learners, you're also welcome no, to react and to comment sa ating magiging session for this time. no. So we are running for 40 minutes. And welcome po sa muli sa another Itulay online tutorial program. I am your tutor. I'm Teacher Tony or Sir Tony. Ang makakasama nyo sa susunod na 40 minutes ng makabuluhang pag-aaral ng Earth and Life Science. So we are now actually on week 8. So we are now on the last week of our uh, learning competencies. So actually, ang Earth and Life Science ay hanggang week 7 lang. So what I did is, for week 8, re-reviewin natin yung mga concepts, kung maga -re refresh natin yung mga brain cells ninyo regarding sa mga concepts natin about biology or life science. Alright? Okay ba yun? Ayan, so another thing, are you ready? So, tulad ng isang regular classroom setup, so may mga requirements, sir. So, make sure that you have your pen and paper ready para makapag-jot down kayo ng mga trivia, mga notes, or whatsoever. Uh, next thing is, siguro learning modules, hindi masyado nga yung magagamit kasi we're reviewing uh, the totality of the quarter two modules. Next is, syempre, kailangan ng presence, on, uh, presence of mind at ng, syempre, 
of your heart. Ako ba puso ninyo? <laughs> Next is very important. I want you to, I'm requesting you to comment and react sa magiging discussions natin para syempre, mas masaya naman tayo, di ba? Maging interactive. Alright? Para ma-maximize natin yung technology. Okay ba yun? Alright. So for week 8, again, this is a uh, review of quarter 2 modules. Uh, after going through this module, you're expected to, number one, recall important concepts on life science or biology. So in the second quarter in Earth and Life. And then finally, number two, answer review items correctly. So later on, I'll help you uh, answer the items correctly. So pero you have to, uh, no, to, to, in, to, in, to be engaging them and to, to interact with me via uh, the comment section. Okay? So these are, kung maaalala ninyo, these are the different concepts that we have discussed under life science. So kasama dyan yung mga pieces of evidence uh, based dun sa naging uh, evolution. You also have the unifying themes in biology. Mamaya, mabalikan natin yan. Reproduction, genetic engineering techniques. Tapos may benefits ba yung mga GMO or yung mga tinatawag nating genetically modified organisms. We will, be also, we will also be talking about organ systems, especially sa, sa ating mga tao. And then the process of evolution, tapos yung last na topic, so since na-discuss lang, kakadiscuss lang natin yung last week, so hindi na muna natin siya babalikan. Alright? Ayan, so it's time for our review. Ayan na, so reminder lang ulit ha, so you can comment while we are having our discussion. Ayan. So, we have the primitive earth. Ayan. So, what can you see or what can you notice dito sa primitive earth natin? So, unlike sa earth na natitirhan natin ngayon, so, the earth before is, or the primitive earth is very unstable. So, unstable in terms of, ayan, as you can see, maraming volcanic eruptions na nagagana. Very active ang mga tectonic plates natin, nagbabanggaan, causing earthquakes, volcanic eruptions. And what can you say about the the atmosphere natin. So, may nabubuhay pa ba? Or may nabubuhay na ba during that time? So, there was a time may na nag-start ng life. Pero before that, sa so mga simpler organisms pa lang nabubuhay kasi ang atmosphere natin ay toxic. So, ibig sabihin ng toxic, so hindi pa siya makakapag-support ng mga living organisms. So, and as you can see din, ang mga water natin sa mga oceans at saka seas ay nagsisimula pa lang maging stable or mag-develop. So, that is the primitive earth. So, I also want you to recall, ayan, so ito yung parang ano natin, uh, the timeline ng evolution natin. So, from the beginning na nag-start ng life natin, nag on life, hanggang mag-exist tayong mga tao, alright? So, the first form of life is believed to have appeared some 3.5 billion years ago. So, the first forms of life are the bacteria. So, the, yung bacteria na yun, very simple lang sa last in, and they are found in microfossils. Okay? And if you would recall, we have discussed about eukaryotes and prokaryotes. Ano ba yung difference noon? So, eukaryotes, they have a very stable na nucleus. Ibig sabihin, naka-envelope yun ang nuclear envelope, surrounded by the nuclear envelope. Pag prokaryotic cells naman, hindi uh, organized yung mga, mga parts ng cells niya. Okay? So, eukaryotic cells, cells evolve from prokaryotic cells. We also have this concept, multicellular organisms just like us, mga animals, mga plants, we are all, we are all multicellular organisms. Ibig sabihin, we are made up of one, uh, two or more cells, actually billions or millions of cells. So we evolved now from eukaryotic cells that underwent the process called cell specialization. So nag-evolve or uh, na-modify yun because of the different factors. Speaking of the factors, of course, evolution of life, yung concept number four natin, yung pang last natin dito, the evolution of life is brought about by the changes in the environment. So that's then the first, uh, the number one factor kung bakit nag evolve yung mga tao or mga organisms. We have to survive kasi. So in order for us to survive, syempre kailangan natin mag-adopt sa environment. So pwede magbago ang physical characteristics natin, yung morphology natin, pwede ang behavior and combination of those uh, changes. So we'll know, I will review more about evolution later on. Ayan, so let's have the first question. Ayan, so saying good afternoon sa ating mga viewers. Hello po sa inyo lahat. So help me answer, number one, oxygen was scarce during the early development of Earth. So by this situation, what kind of organism first existed? 
So, senior high school student. So, alam ko na alam ninyo ang process of elimination kapag multiple choice type of questions, di ba? Alright. So, we will have, we'll look for clue words. So, oxygen was scarce. So, walang oxygen or yung oxygen during that time is not enough. So, tanggalin natin si letter C tsaka si letter D kasi obviously, hindi yung to survive during primitive earth. So, you choose between aerobic and anaerobic. Can I see some answers sa comment box natin? Is it aerobic organism or anaerobic kapag uh, scars ang oxygen natin? Okay, so the correct answer would be, all right, so anaerobic organisms. So they exist during that time. So ito yung mga nasa slides natin. So B, ayan, correct, Miss Sally Candubo. Nice try, Miss Jessica Pabliko. Ayan, we also talk about fossils. Ayan, so mga napapanood natin mga movies sa mga museums. Ayan, mahilig ba kayong pumunta sa museums? Nakakamiss pumunta sa museum kasi ang mga museum ngayon ay sarado pa. But anyway, so here is a slide uh, depicting the different types of fossils. We have petrified fossils. We have molds and casts. Carbon films. Ayan. Trace fossils. Mga traces ng mga malalaking animals. And finally, you also have preserved remains. Ito yung parang sa movie ng Jurassic Park, di ba? So, na-preserve sa resin. Tapos kumuha ng DNA. Tapos and then after that, they were able to reproduce the gigantic dinosaurs. Alright? So, question number two kasi is about fossils. Ayan. So, hi, Mr. Miss Lin Jan Lozada. Ayan. So, good morning from Saudi Arabia. Ayan. Hello po, ma'am. One of my favorite subjects now. So, okay, ma'am, let's try to answer this. Which of the following is not true about the evidence that fossils provide? Sige, I'll be reading the choices. A, all fossils gathered contain intact DNA that can be sequenced. Lahat ba may DNA? B, fossil ages can often be determined by, the, by testing nearby rocks. Tama ba yun? So, ginagamit ba natin mga rocks? Letter C, fossil organisms often share physical similarities with living organisms. So, may resemblance ba yung mga nabuhay dati sa mga nabubuhay ngayon, just like us? And letter D, some fossil organisms are transitional forms between groups of organisms. Ibig sabihin ng transition, din nga, nag-underwent nag ng process ng evolution. So, what's the answer kaya? Alright, so may nakatama na. So, the correct answer is, we are, we are looking for the false statement. So, ang false dito ay letter A. Hindi lahat ng fossils na nakukuha ng mga paleontologists, they contain the DNA kasi may, may mga conditions para ma-preserve. But there are times na very harsh yung condition, syempre, ma-fade away or mawawala yung mga particular cell parts containing the DNA. Alright, good job! Ayan, speaking of this, are you familiar with this? Ang tawag dito ay stromatolites. So I can really remember this amazing amaze ako when I first watched a documentary about this. So ang stromatolites kasi, they are considered as para mga living fossils. So ang significance nila is that they are the earliest fossil evidence of life on Earth. And until now, makikita pa rin sila sa Bahamas at dun sa napanood ko na documentary sa Australia. So ganyan itsura nila, parang malalaking tipak na bato scattered and may mga nakakabit sa kanila. Ang tawag doon ay mga cyanobacteria. So, early cyanobacteria and stromatolites are thought to be largely, largely responsible for increasing the amount of oxygen. So, they became fossils. Ang tawag sa kanilang fossils kasi naging uh, indicator sila na ay, may mga cyanobacteria. And ang mga cyanobacteria na yun ay responsible daw para mas maging stable yung amount ng oxygen during the primitive earth. Kaya nga, nag-boom yung life or nag-flourish ang life. Alright, so that brings us to question number three. Alright, so as part of searching for the fossils. Ayan, very good yung mga sumasagot. Thank you so much. Sige, let's try to answer this. Number three, as part of searching for the fossils of previous organisms, Stromatolites, and then, uh, word of, one of the words of the day natin yan. Stromatolites played a significant role. What is true about stromatolites? A. Found on eukaryotes. B. Produced by endosymbiosis. Kumbaga may, may relationship between the organisms on them. Actually, cyanobacteria lang, so wala na yung letter B. Letter C. It consists of layered bacteria and sediments. So sediments are... Uh, Siyempre, sediments sa perform yan ng rocks. Ayan, may clue na kayo dyan, <laughs> And letter D, it is formed during, uh, during volcanic eruptions. What, is, what do you think is the answer or the best answer for number three? 
Ayan. So, we are all proud of you. Wow, nakakataba naman ang puso ito. Miss Lynn Jan Lozada, laban lang. I can see some answers. Very good, Miss Jessica, Miss uh, Mr. J. M. Valencia. Sino ba tama? I think letter C. Ayan. <laughs> Si Ms. Jessica, nakatama. It consists of layered bacteria and sediment. So yung mga cyanobacteria, they can photosynthesize. Ibig sabihin, ang byproduct nila, nakapag-produce sila ng oxygen. So yung oxygen na yun, na-release atmosphere natin. And once they are released, nag-accumulate, naging stable ang earth. And then when the oxygen level was stable, nag-boom na or nag-flourish na yung mga living organisms. Alright, good job. Thank you for those who are answering. Next slide tayo. So next concept is, let's review the unifying themes in biology. So ano ba yung unifying themes na yan? So we all know that the field of science that deals with the study of life is the life science or biology. Yung inaaral natin ngayon. It involves different disciplines. Okay? So some students actually nakaka-encounter ako. They really love biology kasi syempre they, they're studying about animals, they study about anatomy, human anatomy. Others naman, they are... Pero medyo uh, ilang sila sa biology kasi ang dami daw may memorize. Actually, uh, biology is parang chill, chill lang na, na, na subject. Pero hindi naman totally chill kasi you have to to practice patience in memorizing the different terms. Okay, yun ang clue doon. Okay? So these are the unifying themes. Ano yung mga unifying themes na yun? So we have biological systems. So may hierarchy. We have cell. Interaction with the environment. Of course, kailangan ng energy para mabuhay, energy and life. Uh, living organisms also have different forms and function. We also have reproduction and inheritance. So reproduction, isa, isa to sa mga characteristics ng mga living things. Kailangan makapag-reproduce para makapag-continue yung species or particular lahi ng isang organism. Regulation, so regulation in terms of uh, homeostasis, makapag-survive ang isang organism. Adaptation sa kung anong klaseng environment or anong klaseng habitat meron siya. We also have evolution, of course. At kanino ko pa minimension. And then finally, very important, biology, yung mga concepts na inaaral natin, magiging useless yan kung hindi siya napapakinabangan sa ating society or sa ating communities. Alright? So kaya nga, yung mga senior high school students natin dyan, in the future, no, sana you consider taking up science courses kasi ang daming promising uh, careers for you kapag nag-take ka ng science courses. Alright? So, so much for that. Your challenge now is to answer number four. Ayan. So all organisms alive today have descended from simple cellular creatures billions of years ago. So on the right, we, you can see the tree of life. So kung paano nag-branch out from simple organisms into a more complex organisms, including us humans. So ang tanong dito, biologists were able to identify and preserve some of the characteristics of the earliest organisms. So sa ang team daw nabibilang yun? A. Function and structure. B. The cell theory. C, the emergent properties that arise from the organization of life. Or letter D, unity of living systems is explained by evolutionary conservation. Sige nga. Ah, um, Leo is asking kung pwede daw makahingi ng PowerPoint. Pwede, pwede po. You just visit the DepEd Commons website. So, nandun po, ina-upload po natin lahat ng itulay PowerPoint presentations po natin. Okay? So, the answer for number four is... Letter D, unity of living systems is explained by evolutionary conservation. Hindi dahil siya yung pinakamahabang sentence. Okay? <laughs> Dati pa yun, no? yung, yung concept na gano'n. Actually, you have the clue words kasi dito. So, preservation at saka conservation. Okay? So, sa kapag nag-answer tayo, ha, class, mga senior high school students, hindi ibig sabihin na kapag mahaba yung statement dun sa mga choices natin, that is the automatic correct answer. No, you have to think pa rin you do the process of elimination, okay? Until you arrive sa final answer. All right. Let's proceed. Uh, for items 5 to 8, I want you to uh, identify the unifying team in each illustration. So, madali lang to. So, nasa module nyo to actually. All right. So, investor number 5 or illustration number 5, ayan. So, may parts. Kinagamit ng birds para makafly. Tayo mga tao, we have the uh, our palm or the hands, pang grass, pang right. Okay. So that is, what's the answer for that? 
Okay, correct. We have form and function. For number six, ayan, so si nanay, si tatay. Okay, so very easy. Number six would be about reproduction and inheritance. Okay? Number seven. Ayan, alam na alam natin yan. Yung, yung, ano na yan, yung diagram na yan. So that is your process of evolution. Okay? And number eight. So, uh, tingnan natin na mabuti. So from the sun, from the transfers of plants, sun. Animals at us, ating mga humans. So, which one's being transferred? Correct, energy. So, this, the unifying theme or the answer for number eight is energy and life. So, thank you for those who answered. And ako, very active si ano, Miss Jessica. Sophia is correct. Ayan, Miss Angel. Hello sa inyong lahat. Ayan, so thank you very much. So, like, 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 and share, share, share para maraming maka marating tong broadcast na ito. Alright, next concept is about asexual reproduction. So, pag sinabi natin asexual, uh, opposite siya ng sexual. Kasi ang sexual, it uses gametes or the sex cells. So, the sperm cell for the males and the egg cells for the females. So, kapag asexual reproduction, hindi gagamit ng gametes. Uh, sir, anong gagamitan para makapag-reproduce? Gagamit ng ibang way or, or pwedeng gumamit ng body parts. Kaya nga asexual. Alright? So, questions 9, and 9, 10, and 11 is about this. So, your choices are binary fission. Actually, may mga clue words na kayo dyan. Eh. Napakadali lang yan. Uh, your choices eh, are binary fission, you have budding, and fragmentation. So, may picture ako dyan to support the statement para mas madali kayong ma-refresh yung idea ninyo. Number 9. You can answer this. Sige nga, type nyo na sa chat box natin. The organism split into two separate organisms, like in the case of the bacteria. Ayan, mga bacteria na hugis sausage. Pero mga bacteria, ha, they come in different uh, shapes and sizes. So, commonly, ganyan yung ano, in-illustrate sa mga textbooks saka sa mga references natin online. Number nine, the correct answer is binary fission. So, fission, maghihiwalay. So, don't be confused, ha, kapag fusion naman, mag Mag-join. So, binary fission for the bacteria. Number 10, ito, flatworms. Sorry, kadiri. Ayan. So, pasintabi sa mga <laughs> kumakain dyan. Pero hindi naman totally sobrang kadiri to. So, very small worms lang sila. So, they are flat, of course. Mga, kaya nga flat, flatworms. So, I remember when I was in college. Ayan. So, ginawa namin yan. Naghanap kami ng flatworms sa mga katayan ng baboy. Nilagay namin sa slides. So, paano dumadami ang mga flatworms? Ayan. So, they divide into two. Ayan, leaving one piece headless and the other tailless, each piece. Oh, so, bawat piraso gagalaw or gagalaw, tutubo or mag-grow into another organism. So, that is called, ayan, sige, may sumasagot na ba? Ayan, fragmentation, correct, si Ms. Sophia. Number 11, a new individual grows on the body of its parent like the hydra. Ayan, yung hydra na yan. So, yung hydra, very small, microscopic organisms yan. Makita yun sa mga fresh waters. Ayan, as you can see, may glue na kayo dyan. May bud, para may maliit na usbong na tumubo sa kanyang katawan. So, of course, the process is called budding. Alright, so binary fission, uh, fragmentation, and then budding. Okay? Kapag may screenshot uh, option yung mga phones ninyo, no? you can take a screenshot of those para at least you have backup copies of this. Kapag hindi nyo feel, pumunta sa ano. Alright. Number 12. Giraffe and lion. Very easy question. Are examples of blank animals? Are they oviparous or viviparous animals? Sige nga. What kind of animals are those? To give you a clue, ayan. So pag sinabi natin viviparous, they are the egg-laying animals like the birds, uh, the reptiles, ayan. So yung mga tao, hindi naman tayo naglilay ng eggs, di ba? Hindi naman tayo mga mulawin na naglilay ng eggs. Kasi fictional yun, no? So sa biology, viviparous naman, ayan. So they give birth just like as humans. Mga mammals yan. Usually mga mammals. Alright? So the answer for number 12 is letter B. Bibiparus. Ayan. So, huwag kayong mahiyang mag-comment, So, si Miss Jessica, correct na naman. Hello to Miss Melanie. Miss Angel is correct. Number 12 is letter B. Bibiparus. Next concept natin na inaral natin last time is about genetic engineering techniques. 
So I just selected three. Ito yung mga basic kasi. So iba kasi mas pang, ano na, pang malupitang ano na, genetic engineering. So these are the basics that every senior high school learner should know. So we have selective breeding, cloning, and hybridization. Ayan. So kapag nag-answer naman tayo na identification, of course, tip ni Sir Tony, merong mga clue words. Look for clue words or minsan mismo dun sa diagram, just like I presented, what I presented here, uh, you can get clues. Okay, sige nga, what's the answer for number 13? Yeah, so good afternoon sa mga katsune in lang. We are now on week 8 of Earth and Life Science with me, your tutor for the session, uh, Teacher Tony. Number 13, an exact genetic copy of the other. Ayan, kilala nyo ba yung sheep na yan? That's Dolly the sheep and the process is called cloning. Yeah, so number 13 is cloning. Miss Sophia, naho. Kailangan mabigyan to ng price si Miss Sophia. Very good. They will have the same exact DNA as the parent, cloning. 14. When animals with desired characteristics are mated. So to produce offspring with those desired traits. So pinagbreed ang two types ng dogs para makapag-produce ka ng dash hunt. Tama ba yung pronunciation ko? Dash hunt. Okay, hindi kasi ako dog lover. <laughs> Ayan. So yung dash hunt kasi, ang... Physical characteristics nila, mahaba, elongated sila, and they are very small uh, dogs, dog breeds, compared sa mga usually, ano, usual na animals. Okay? So, anong, ano dyan? Anong ge genetic engineering technique kaya ang ginamit dyan? So, yung desired characteristic, pinili, pinagmate, and then nakapag-produce. That is, pinili, selective breeding. Okay? Angel is correct. Annalisa is correct. Josh is also correct. Good job, guys. Number 15. Luther Borbank created a disease-resistant potato sa patatas. Ayan. Ang problema kasi sa mga patatas, sa pagpaparami ng mga patatas, ang patatas kasi they are prone sa fungi. So may mga fungi sa lupa na umatake sa kanila. So inisipan yun ng... Uh, Inisipan nyo ng way para ma-avoid yung mga ganong klaseng disease. So, ang ginawa ni Luther Burbank, he crossed a disease-resistant plant. So, nakapili sila ng uh, genetically okay and... Uh, when, I, when I say genetically okay and genes, kumbaga maganda yung klase ng genes, disease-resistant siya. Okay? So, para ma-maximize yung genes niya, kasi sayang, di ba? So, i-cross yun or i-breed yun sa ibang uh, klase din ng potato. Okay, so he crossed a disease-resistant plant with one that had a large food-producing capacity. So another trait pa pala, disease-resistant na and mabilis makapagparami. Okay, so mas maganda kasi, magtatanim ka, syempre, mas maraming production, mas production na. Alright, so it's a cross, it's a breed of two traits. Okay, the clue word then is two traits, different traits, hybridization. Okay, ayun, very good. Josh Cara, Angel, Miss Len Linneus. Wow, katangalan si ano. Uh, talaga. Ayan, hybridization, Annalisa, you're all correct. Okay? So 13 is cloning, 14 is selective breeding, and 15 is hybridization. Question number 16, very timely. Ayan. Which among the choices below is used for improving health condition by producing, ayan, kailangan na kailangan natin because of the pandemic, vaccines and pharmaceuticals. Vaccines, and pharmaceuticals refers to, ano, of course, mga medicines, mga drugs natin, mga useful drugs natin. Anong sa tingin ninyo ang tamang sagot for that? I won't give a clue. If you look at the, <laughs> the diagram, sige nga, wala pong sumasagot. So cloning, gene splicing, recombinant DNA technology, or selective breeding? Ah, wala pong sumasagot? <laughs> or baka na, ano lang, na-delay lang. Alright, the correct answer is, reveal ko na, Letter C, recombinant DNA technology. Okay, so bakit tinawag si Sir na recombinant DNA technology? Of course, DNA technology nga, kasi gumagamit siya ng DNA. Kinukuha yung particular DNA na may particular na magandang trait. Alright? So pinaprocess yun, okay, and then it is being inserted to the gene of another organism. Kara kapag nakapag-reproduce yun, mara-replicate lang siya. So, yung na-produce na offspring or bagong organism, it contains the particular trait na gusto natin. Okay? So, doon uh, lumalabas or pumapa lumalabas, pumapasok ang concept natin ng genetically modified organisms. Okay? May nakatama po ba? 
si po sir, sabi ni sir ni ano ni JM, ayan, and ni Miss J Ann, you're all correct. Recombinant DNA technology. So ang next concept natin is about human body system. So let's watch a quick ano lang video, two minutes lang to para ma-refresh lang kayo sa different body systems, okay? Ayan. So our bodies have several biological systems that carry out specific functions necessary for everyday living. And voice over ko. <laughs> Yeah, first is the circulatory system. It moves blood, nutrients, oxygen, carbon dioxide, and hormones around the body. Next is the digestive system. So it consists of a series of connected organs from the mouth to your anus together allow the body to digest and ex extract nutrients. Next is endocrine system. It consists of eight major glands that secrete Hormones. Ayan. So, para sa yung hormones, they regulate different bodily functions such as metabolism, pag-grow natin, at saka sa development ng sexual maturity. We also have the immune system. Ayan. Kailangan matiba yung immune system natin during the pandemic. Okay. Our body's defense against bacteria and viruses. We also have the lymphatic system. Yung mga lymphs. A clear fluid that contains white blood cells. So, pang defense din yan. No? White blood cells. Then. Of course, very important, nervous system. Our brain, the spinal cord, and the nerves. It regulates all the functions of the body. Yeah, the muscular system, which is composed of uh, humans. We have 650 muscles. All in all, Ayan. of course, reproductive. 206 bones make up our skeletal system together with the tendons, ligaments, and cartilages. Ayan. Okay, pa bang ninyo? The respiratory system allows us to take in a very important oxygen. Oops. <laughs> Ayan. The urinary system helps eliminate the waste product called urea. So, our main urinary system organ is. The kidneys. Yeah, wow, clear skin. The skin or the integumentary system is the body's largest organ at Shevin ang ating first line of defense against bacteria and viruses. And that video is courtesy of Live Science. And if you love sciences, you can go, you can always go to that website. Very reliable and dami na lang videos and all. Let's try to answer this one now. All right. So we have the different system mentioned sa, ano to, sa left side muna tayo. So skeletal system, muscular system, nervous, respiratory, digestive, endocrine, urinary, immune, and circulatory. So this are this will be our item 17 to 25. So hindi ko na napalitan yung numbers. Sorry naman. Ha? <laughs> skeletal system. Ay, ganito na lang. So tingnan natin yung second column muna. Sabihin niyo kung ano uh, system yung dinedescribe o, or anong function particular uh, system o nagka-function for that. Okay? Letter A, gas exchange. Ayan. Gas exchange occurs via the movement of air. Letter, uh, I mean, what kind of, uh, what cis body system is that? Of course, that is your respiratory system. Letter B, removes excess salt and water in the body. Ayan. Kanina, yung may angel na nagwiwiwi. Ayan. So, we have the urinary system. Ayan. So, good afternoon sa mga katune in lang. Letter C, formation of antibodies. Sige nga, antibodies pang defend, defend natin sa sakit. We have number 8. That's for number 8, immune system. Uh, letter D, the growth and development of the body. Of course, it is being regulated by, nagsisecrete ng hormones. That is your endocrine system. All right. Number six is letter D. Uh, number letter E, responsible for data or information processing. Na nagather na ating peripheral nervous system or yung mga nerves. That is your, of course, the brain. That's your nervous system. Number three is letter E. Yeah. So may mga sumasagot. Belladonna, Josh, mga active natin. Thank you so much. Let's proceed with letter F. 
Movement is the reaction of the contraction of the muscle. So you have the clue word for that. Number two is letter F, muscular system. Uh, letter G, framework of the body. That is your skeletal system, number one. Uh, letter H is, ayan, heart is the main organ for this system. And of course, the heart, uh, may, uh, the main function of the heart is to pump blood para may oxygen tayo, di ba? So letter H would should be for number nine, circulatory system. And letter I allows the animal to acquire the necessary energy, organic molecules, and essential nutrients. Yan, favorite na favorite natin gawin yan. <laughs> Ang kumain at mag-food trip. Alright, letter I belongs to number... Yon, number five, digestive system. So thank you sa mga sumagot. Nalo siyang natin sila. Hi, Mike, Angel... Yeah, sila Josh, Belladonna, Sophia, Jay Ann, and many others. Good job. All right, so quick review lang. So this one is courtesy of the Man of National Geographic. You can visit their YouTube channel. Maraming mga short videos doon, very informative. So for infrastructure systems, you have the skeletal, the muscular, the cardiovascular, and the nervous system. So cardiovascular is also refers to the circulatory system, right? For regulation, of course, and regulate ng bodily functions natin, endocrine, lymphatic, and the urinary system. And we all know that we have, of course, for reproduction, the reproductive system. And finally, for energy systems, we have digestive and respiratory. Sir, bakit nasa energy system ang respiratory? Kasi ang respiratory system ang responsible para makapag-acquire ang katawan natin ng oxygen. At hindi mabiburn ang mga, uh, hindi makakon convert yung energy na nasa pagkain kapag walang oxygen. Kaya nasa energy system ang respiratory system. Okay? So that's another ano, learning for you. And for the last concept, ayan. We have around 4 minutes. Kayang-kaya na natin to. So we can see evolution right here. So I chose to present to you the evolution of uh, man. Ayan. It's a theory. So actually, it's a convincing theory theory kasi different fossils are excavated from the different parts of the world suggesting that we are or that we really emerge or that we really came from a certain type of mammal okay uh, evolution is the theory in biology postulating that the various types of plants plants animals and other living things on earth have their origin in other pre-existing types so nanggaling tayo so particular organism ang tawag natin sa kanila ay mga ancestors okay mga ancestral organisms natin and because of the change session because of the changes in the environment kailangan nating mag-evolve morphologically structure natin and behavior natin para makapag a number one goal natin syempre to survive sabi nga di ba survival of the fittest para makapag uh, continue pa yung lahi for a particular generations so iba ang Evolution ng a scientific concept natin na evolution sa evolution ng isa sa mga longest running anime sa balat ng lupa. <laughs> Grade 6 pa lang ako, may ganito na. Pokemon, alright? So sa Pokemon kasi mabilis ang evolution, di ba? So i-upgrade mo lang, kasanayin mo lang yung Pokemon, mag-evolve na siya into a particular organism, another Pokemon na siya. Pero yung evolution natin na tinatawas yung ano, yung evolution, pero yung thousands of years lang. Pero it, should, it will take millions or billions of years, just like in the case of us humans. Ayan. So for evolution, ang last na ano natin is, ayan, i-guess lang natin. And so we're running out of time. So reviewin na lang natin. Or be, be, ano na, revealing the answers. So Thomas Malthus for number 26, he believed that populations grow geometrically while resources slow increase or not at all, leading to competition. So may, ang pinaka-pinopoint niya is yung competition with regards of the uh, resources. And of course, number 27, kinala kala natin yan, si Lolo Charles Darwin, sa kanya nang, nang galing yung idea na we came from the apes. He thought of the idea of the decent modification. For number 28, we have Carl von Linné, the father of taxonomy and classifications. His real name is Carl von Linné, ha? So, sa, dahil sa, sa siya yung introduce ng scientific name. So, sobrang tuwa niya sa scientific name. Pati yung sarili niyang pangalan, ginawa niyang scientific name. So, kaya naging Linnaeus. Carl von Linnaeus, totoong pangalan niya. 
For 29 is, we have Alfred Russell Wallace. And for number 30, we have Jean Baptiste Lamarck. So these are the European scientists that contribute para sa ating uh, concept ng evolution. Okay, so again, uh, you can have the a copy of the PowerPoint presentation sa ating DepEd Common website, DepEd Commons website. And if you have questions pa, ayan, sige, pag may time, pag di ako busy gumawa ng script, <laughs> you can send me an email, you can chat me on Facebook, you can visit my YouTube uh, channel, Mr. Voice Educator PH. So thank you so much. So that ends our session for Earth and Life Science. I hope you enjoyed sa ating review session. All right. So our next natin na subject, what can be uh, For senior high school, we have a very interesting subject then, media and information literacy, courtesy of Tutor Cat. All right. So again, this is Teacher Tony. Unleash your sai sai at husay na inyong mga sarili. Bye bye. See you next week. Sigurado ako na marami ka na namang natutuhan sa ating itulay tutorial session ngayong araw. Tandaan, ito ay hindi lamang para sa ating mga mag-aaral, kundi pati rin sa ating mga minamahal na guro at mga magulang na kaagapay natin para maituloy ang pagkatuto sa kabila ng nararanasang pandemya. Patuloy ding sumubaybay sa DepEd TV para sa mga araling ginawang video episodes. Mapapanood ito mula lunes hanggang sabado, alas 7 ng umaga hanggang alas 7 ng gabi sa inyong mga telebisyon. Abangan bukas mula alauna ng tanghali ang iba pang aralin sa ating itulay free online tutorial session sa English. I-like and subscribe at manatiling nakasubaybay sa ating itulay tutorial session sa DepEd EdTech Unit FB page at Educational Technology Unit channel sa YouTube at sa DepEd Tayo at DepEd Philippines social media accounts. Paalam!